Friends, greetings from Lake Oconee, Georgia. Uh, Billy and I just got done shooting not one, but two cars, the 2017 Nissan Sentra SR Turbo with a manual transmission and the 2017 Nissan Rogue Hybrid. You're probably gonna see that episode in a couple of weeks. Uh, but this is one of these places that is stunningly beautiful. Uh, so we figured we wanna do a little bit more here. So um, I have a couple more of your questions. So why don't we go through some of your questions and do a bit of a fireside chat kind of style thing. Granted, it's the morning, there's not going to be a fire, but I'm gonna sit on my arse and go through your questions. So apparently I misjudged the sun here. So while I put on my sunglasses here, Billy, why don't you show them the lake here? Uh, this is Lake Oconee. Uh, and to give you an idea of where we're at, we're about halfway between Atlanta and Augusta, Georgia, about 50 miles south of Athens. So this is really a nice, a pretty part of the world. Uh, and all these, this all used to be like a plantation here. So these are like second homes for people probably in the south and, and, and my guess is from other parts of the world. Anyway, let's start with a question that has come from a number of you and that is, uh, where is the options game gone? Uh, it actually hasn't gone anywhere. We just have been incredibly busy. If you've been following me on Instagram or Twitter, I have literally been on a plane since the end of May nonstop, like something like 70 or 80,000 air miles just since May. Uh, so we just haven't had the time to shoot the options game. But you're probably noticing that we've made some adjustments to the programming strategy. So uh, we're making room for some stuff. So if you've noticed, we haven't done the options game as much, but we're gonna start doing it a bit more. We've added these Ask Moto Mans on a weekly basis. And then we've added the new Round the Block review. You're gonna see two other new format shows coming to the fore here. Uh, one of them is a mini series format. We've got two already shot. Uh, one's gonna be coming to you very shortly and it's gonna be a weekly basis of this mini series. We're gonna follow an arc for like an eight week period. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question about the options game because I too have a lot of fun with that. Now let's switch to a specific question, but as I am looking out on the lake here, I'm seeing this colony of ants. You know how like they go back and forth and form like their own expressway? Well, these guys are moving at a speed I have never seen before. It's like the Autobahn of, of ants. There must be something in the air here in Georgia. Uh, anyway, let's move on to Asim's question. Asim Jimenez, Asim Jimenez. Uh, my apologies if I am butchering your name here. But Asim's question is, uh, he is trying to choose between a Lexus RX350, wait for it, and a Lincoln MKX. Now, part of me thinks you guys ask me questions about Lincolns because you just want to see my reaction about Lincolns. So we need to uh, unpack uh, this on two levels. There is the actual question on its face, which is between two specific cars, and then there is just the problem of Lincoln. And let's start with the problem of Lincoln. I, for the life of me, just can't understand why anybody would want to buy a Lincoln in today's day and age when there are so many better vehicles out there. And really the problem with Lincoln is they are trying to turn around the brand, but it's like the old saying, if, you, if you're trying to solve a problem and you try to use solutions that you've used in the past that didn't work, you're just bound for failure. And that is exactly what Lincoln is doing. All they're doing is taking Ford products, rebadging them and making them Lincolns. And yeah, they're better than they used to be. Like the Lincoln MKX is somewhat attractive. Um, yes, the EcoBoost family of engines is a good family of engines, actually good in, in many other cars in the Ford world, but that's what Ford's for. And if you are going to be competitive in the hyper competitive space of near luxury or even luxury, you need a much better mousetrap. And that's why Mercedes wins, that's why Lexus wins, that's why BMW wins, and that's why now Hyundai and their Genesis brand is gonna start eating other people's lunches because there are lazy car manufacturers out there like Lincoln. Um, like for example, $50,000, you can buy an E-Class, uh, an Audi A6, a very basic one, you can buy a BMW, or you can get a Lincoln MKZ. If I'm gonna put, and this is an important point here, if I'm gonna give you 50,000 greenbacks 
Forget about leasing. You know how I feel about leasing. If I'm going to give you 50,000 greenbacks, I want you to be honest with me. Are you really going to hand them over to a Mercedes dealer, a Lexus dealer, an Audi dealer, or are you going to hand them over to a Lincoln dealer for a tarted up Ford Fusion? When you think about it from that perspective, and this is this is part of the reason why I get on you guys about how you acquire vehicles, not just the vehicles themselves, because I want you to realize something very important here. You don't drive a price and you don't drive a payment. You drive a car. And let's say for the sake, you know, not everybody's going to subscribe to my view of the world, the Dave Ramsey, you should buy the car in cash view of the world, and I totally appreciate that. But let's say for the sake of discussion, you do want to finance the vehicle. I'm not even talking about leasing. That is unacceptable. Um, and you're going to run a contract for 36 months or 48 months. If you do it more than that, you can't afford the car. No matter how long you run that contract, I want you to think about this. You need to be just as excited when you are writing out payment 48 as you were when you were writing out the check for payment 1. So when you think about it from that perspective, I'm thinking the majority of you would not be interested in a Lincoln, especially when you look at some of the designs of like this Lincoln Continental that's come out and the fact that they're just not doing anything in terms of innovating the platform. You know, I have been very upfront that I, I am a huge fan of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It is, it is not my cup of tea. You know I'm a Lotus guy. You know I like small cars with manual transmissions that are totally unreliable. A Mercedes-Benz S-Class is a huge car. It doesn't handle like those cars. It is, it's a boat on the road, even if you get the AMG. But I love this vehicle because it is an amazing platform. The BMW is an also-ran. A great vehicle, but an also-ran because the Mercedes is so good. But don't get me wrong. The BMW is not bad. The BMW is a worthy competitor because it, too, has an amazing platform, and I wouldn't get mad at any of you for choosing a 7 Series over an S-Class because it's, while it's not as just, I mean, <laughs> the Mercedes is, is the super hot sister, and the BMW is, you know, she's the smart sister, and she, she's, you know, just as good in so many other ways, but she's different, but still just as good. The Lincoln, not the case. Ford is just not investing into the platform for those vehicles. And look at what Cadillac, I'm really going off on a rant here, but look at what Cadillac has done. They have invested, what, I would say almost 20 years now. They started in 1998, I would argue, with the Escalade, and then the, uh, they came out in the early 2000s with the CTS. So it's been almost 20 years that they have been investing into platforms, into making a good product, and they didn't sell many of them, but here they are still investing into huge platform changes to bring out a better product like the CT6. That's what it takes to turn a brand around, not what Ford is doing. But now back to the face of a seams question, and that is the choice between the Lincoln and Lexus. Uh, I, I think you can tell which one I would choose, but I want to expand this out a bit because I think there's a couple of other choices in this. Now, Asim, when he gave me this question, he did say that there was indeed a price difference between the Lincoln and the Lexus, and I'm assuming it's the Lincoln that was cheaper. And you see the advertisements for Lincoln out there. It's like, hey, you know, special red carpet lease. You can get a, a luxury car for uh, $400 a month that has heated and cooled seats and does all this stuff. And that's really what Lincoln is trading on. They're trading on selling you the concept of a luxury car, but nothing if you actually were writing a check for it that people would buy. Where Lexus, people are reaching out and saying, I want an RX350. So let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, I think you should go look at the Cadillac XT5. If the Lexus is the gold standard, I would argue the Cadillac is uh, maybe the platinum standard, because there's some areas where it's better than the Lexus and some areas where the Lexus is better, and that's really up to you. Uh, and also, I want to give you a completely something off in left field here, because let's say you do want to save a couple of bucks, you should go look at the Kia Sorento. And, I, and the one I'm telling you to go look at is the 2.5 turbo, the one that has the two row, not the three row. Because I think if you were to drive that, you'd be very surprised, A, by the way it drives, and B, the level of luxury in that car. Granted, it's, it's not where the Cadillac and the Lexus are, but it's also a lot less money. But that aside, 
very similar concept, very similar vehicle. It'll do everything you want the other ones to do and you'll probably save 10, 15 grand in the process. So I would look at those three cars uh, and let me know what you end up doing. And uh, hopefully um, we we've clarified this, this how I stand on Lincolns. So with that, let's press on to the next question. Now, right from the outset of this question, I can tell you my blood pressure is not going to get as high. And this one's actually somewhat fun. This comes in from Richard on Twitter. He has a very interesting Twitter handle, uh, RickyBobby2915. Uh, anyway, Richard asked a very good question. He's trying to decide between a Jaguar SVR F-Type or a 911 uh, Carrera 4S. He lives in the Midwest. He's looking for a daily driver. He's only going to have one car and he has the garage, wants to keep it five to seven years. Now this one's a very simple answer. You're going to go with a Porsche. And the reason why I said go with a Porsche, whenever someone asks me a question of which car should I get, I always ask you guys three questions. So for future Ask Moto Man segments, if you're gonna ask me which car should I buy, let me know where you live, what you're gonna do with the car, and most importantly, how you're gonna keep it. And this is how I've answered uh, Ricky Bobby's question. And that is, if you're keeping a car more than five years, there are very few cars I recommend uh, beyond like a Lexus or like a General Motors car. But in this case, when we're talking sports cars, uh, I would do the Porsche, because surprisingly, Porsches are, especially 911s, are very reliable cars. And that's a big function of the engineering that goes into them. I'm gonna do a special episode on all of the engineering that went into the new engine family of the Porsche 911s as well as the Boxsters. It's a fascinating backstory. Anyway, five to seven years, I don't care what region of the world you're in, if you're talking a sports car, you have to get a 911. Uh, there's very few other cars I would suggest. Like, I could tell you to go look at like the, uh, the C coupe in the AMG Sport, but then we're back to the issue of five to seven years, and I wouldn't suggest having that car past five years. Those, you know, Mercedes, BMWs, Jaguars, anything when you're gonna own it past the warranty, uh, you're just asking for trouble. And let's just say that in, in the world of the Midwest, I would rather have an all-wheel drive Porsche. They've been doing it for so many years. You're gonna benefit for that experience rather than doing a Jaguar who's only done it for what, Cup, what a handful, three years they've been doing their, their all-wheel drive. I could be wrong on this, but I, I want the benefit, and I've actually experienced 911s in cold weather climates in Europe, and I've experienced 911s in the cold weather climates of Colorado, so I personally have a lot of experience. Plus, I just think it's just a better car. It's a more dynamic car to drive. I, I, I do love the way the Jaguar looks. Ian, personal friend as well as a friend of the show, uh, he did a great job on that F-Type. But this is where I'd, I'd prize function over form. Hopefully that answers your question, Richard. Okay, so with Richard's question, I wanna wrap it up from there. And I think we should get off our ass because I wanna show you guys the lake here. Uh, so as I said, this is Lake Oconee. Uh, I was pronouncing it Oconee in the episode, so uh, my apologies there. And look at this, people, man. Okay, you're seeing this is the fancy place we're staying here, but look at the lake. Forget about that place. The lake, man, this is... All these people have this like lake frontage property here and they have the docks and this is, so uh, a little backstory. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time on a lake not far from here, uh, Lake Lanier, which is another large lake like this, uh, affectionately referred to as Lake Lanier. What a fantastic place. Granted, the houses weren't fancy like this. They were just like normal houses and people would just chill. Everyone had a boat or a dock or something like that. And they would bring their boats out into the center of the lake like on July 4th. And they would all like kind of like rope and dock next to each other and like have a big party and beers and watch fireworks. And then people during the day would water ski. And, you know, this is not something I am used to. Like I grew up in the city. I live in California. Yeah, I live right by the ocean, but that's, this is, I love the communal property. This is just so wonderful. And uh, yeah, I gotta get me a lake house. I think that's what I need. I need a lake house. Anyway, uh, I wanna turn both questions we just covered, uh, Asim's question as well as Richard's question, around to you guys. And I want you guys to answer the questions. Now, keep in mind, you have to answer the questions with all the same parameters, meaning in Richard's case, 
you have to answer the question on a car he's keeping five to seven years and the fact that he is living in the Midwest. So as much as I would say to him, you need to buy a Lotus Elise, he probably shouldn't get a Lotus Elise. And in the case of a Seam's question, you need to give him, you know what, maybe you could be just as mad at him about the Lincoln idea, but you know what, I think a Seam will see the light and he'll probably end up with that Cadillac or the Lexus. But maybe there's a car that I'm forgetting in that area, so please share that with a Seam, and I appreciate all the questions coming in from you guys, and I have a really good time doing this, especially, I love this like fireside chat format, so I may do more of these. Uh, anyway, uh, let me know your answers in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which you can download for free at Apple iTunes or Google Play. And did you know that we are live on five, count them, five international airlines? Emirates, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin America, Virgin Australia, and soon American Airlines. And I want to leave you with a fun fact. Uh, fun fact number one, look, there's a ski boat over there. Sadly, I am not on it. So, Billy, let's not look at the ski boat anymore. And fun fact number two, um, while I am sad to leave this place, Billy and I are heading out to Hotlanta right now, and not but three miles from where I stand is a Zaxby's. And that's where Billy and I are going right now. Until I see you next time, bis später.